I used to watch your videos from way back in the day when you were in your garage building them. You know, yeah. you had a couple friends showing up and you were building, you were testing your boards. It was pretty exciting because I think at that time there wasn't a lot in the market. There wasn't like a powerful uh, speed controller, right? And then you, you kind of... So you took kind of that, that Vetter, that Vesk or something, and then you yeah. made it your own, right? Because it was an open source project, right? So so everybody could like change it up and make it better and all this other stuff. Yeah, it, it was, exactly. The mo like that's what... That's one of the things that made my company stand out. Like that was the original um, motor controller that we yeah. developed there. And, you know, it's, it's based on an open source um, design. Platform, And yeah. yeah, my company back in the day, back in 2014, Inertion, we're trying to get good parts together so people can build skateboards. And the missing link was a motor controller that could run higher voltages essentially that was the main thing that made it better because the higher the voltage the more efficient your your power system and your your drivetrain you can design a more efficient system and and it just makes sense to run higher voltages before that everyone was using stuff that was for rc cars so hobby you go to the hobby shop and buy uh things that just weren't designed for humans to to be moved around the brake was no good the acceleration was too too crazy for it to be comfortable so this was the first thing that really came out that was programmable um and reliable and open source so everyone could participate in trying to make stuff better and that's what happened and we i mean we started manufacturing circuit boards never done it before and just thought well let's just do it and see what happens and you know the first batch of 100 was pretty bad um and then the next batch was a little bit better and and then we realized we needed to sort of put a lot more focus and attention on how to get a quality circuit board because you could you can put all these little components on here and it, it can look like it's meant to look but it won't work. <laughs> so you've, you've then got to have testing um, and, and stuff that, that backs up the design. And so we, it took us a while to, to work out how to do it. And then we started uh, getting advice from engineers who were you know, specialists in testing electronics and our team started to grow and, and we you know, started making our different changes to the designs and eventually ended up with this one, which I don't know if you've seen this one in person yet, the 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 Foxbox Unity, but the it's Unity. Um, yeah, it's got the two motors built into it. Where before, with that, you had to have two of them, yeah. and it was a real nightmare for people to connect it all together, and you know, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that user friendly. Where now you can sort of just plug it all in, and so now I'm focusing on that. I think there's still a huge um, demand in the market for affordable reliable motor controllers that people can just plug together like that believe it or not building an electric skateboard still isn't that simple like <laughs> it's we can still make it easier um yeah. and that's that's now my my goal pretty much i just want to make everyone doesn't matter if you've got a cheap chinese board or a a really expensive evolve or whatever if, if your electronics fail in that and you need to get a replacement part i want to be the guy that has the product that you can just throw it in and you'll be back up and running again so that's that's my new uh motivation i see yeah i d i never seen that one but i i did buy a couple of your the single fox boxes the one that the black mm. one that's in the and yeah, you know, when you take it apart, uh, that or probably that one, that one, but with the case, you were selling them for yeah. a while with the case, right? This and they one. had the, yeah, that one right there. Yeah. So I have yeah. a couple of those and you know, yeah, I took them apart. As soon as you get it, you take it apart and you're like, <laughs> oh, okay. You're doing some cool stuff there. You're, you're redesigning, you're using different MOSFETs in there. And then you're putting like a big heat sink, right? So that, so that it would, cause that's about, that's, that's really what adds reliability to these. It's how quickly you can and efficiently remove like the heat from it, right? And you yeah. can stabilize it. All that's other stuff. You use higher quality like 
uh, uh, what are those little things? The uh, yeah. So the we we realized pretty yeah. yeah the 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 reference design for the original one was not quite up to spec where it needed to be in terms of reliability. There was the first sort of era of VESC. The biggest thing that happened is the DRV chip, this tiny little uh, rectangle there, they blew up all the time. And it was mostly due to the fact that they were getting voltage spikes and getting a lot of noise and, and, and they just don't like that. So it took a, a while to, to work out how to get a clean signal running into them. And m mostly it just came down to positioning the components on the circuit board and, and having the right quality and the right ratings on all of the components. So really technical stuff. I mean, way over my head, but fortunately we had um, electronics engineers that were great at it. I'm not an engineer. I'm fully self-taught. Uh, you know, as a kid, I played a lot of Lego. That was about it. But when it comes to the circuit design, there's so many little variables that go into it to get something that's reliable. And even now, there are people starting up trying to produce them. That, the, the reliability is just not there because they haven't gone through the years of trial and error and and working out, ah, you need to use more capacitors here and you need to position them closer to the MOSFETs and all these little subtleties, um, it actually makes a huge difference. So um, yeah. fortunately, we've, we went through all the trial and error and now the, the product's super reliable. So that, that's it good. <laughs> And so you spend quite a bit of time and effort and money into that project, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. I it's mean, not I cheap. ended up like it's not. I, I I put my life savings into my my former company and never really paid myself a wage. I I, I worked for free basically for five years, <laughs> um, and it's yeah. Sadly. Um, it just wasn't that profitable. It, electric skateboard building in general um, isn't that profitable. Um, so, you know, that's probably why Booster Board isn't around anymore. They, were, they went <laughs> yeah. broke, you know, they didn't make any money. So, um, not what the yeah, Chinese so. can do it for half the price, you know, like when they're flooding the market with something that's compelling enough to buy, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. there, is a, yeah. there is a marketplace for premium products but it's not that big oh, yeah. right it's usually like it's small and you have to have a lot of capital you have to be like apple right like it has a ton of money and is doing a thing that is really hard for all the you know all the other companies to compete or you gotta just go yeah. and fight them all the time you know whenever they copy you something you gotta just throw millions of dollars and you know just years of litigation against them and stuff so that's that's the only way you succeed at that stuff uh, otherwise, yeah, it gets I, copied. I, I think, yeah, you ha it's, it's tough. You either have to constantly innovate, so you're constantly yeah. bringing out new, better, 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 which is really not a smart way to run your business in terms of profitability because of the R&D. You know, you're paying more and more engineers to just keep working on new stuff. And really, to be profitable, what you want to do is just have one product that you can sell heaps of and, and try to make a stable business. And if you do not continue to innovate and you do just focus on a, a stable product like Booster Board did with their boards, they didn't really change the technology that much over the years, then you get copied. So then you've got to fight legally, patents, design patents, trademark, copyright. So then you get pulled in that direction. So yeah, it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough place to be. But if you're passionate about it and you love building stuff, which I do, like I said, I, I'm not an engineer, um, but I love creating stuff. I love coming up with ideas and just trying to work out how to make them. And that's what I like doing. So mm. at the end of the day, I didn't make, I didn't become a wealthy entrepreneur, but I, I learnt a hell of a lot about manufacturing. I learnt um, from mistakes and why I shouldn't do things a certain way. And you know what? That's, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> still happy. Still, still healthy. Still happy. Um, and you You're still young, too. You know, I, you're right. Yeah, 
you learn more out of out of failure. So you're in a good place because next venture you're gonna do things different. You're gonna be like, ah, that thing didn't work last time. Let's try something different. You're gonna make new mistakes, but the old ones, yeah. hopefully, you're not right. And so, so that's you're gonna be a much better, you know businessman because of this um yeah exactly one of my favorite sayings is um what is it it's uh die trying or live crying you know what i mean you can there's a lot of people that never um give it a go you know they they're yeah. too scared or they're um not willing to back themselves financially or, or they just you know they just don't go to that next level um, I, w I was never that kind of guy. I was like, man, I'm going to go down. If, you know, if I go down on this, at least I gave it a shot. So um, yeah. I think that's a good lesson for any young entrepreneurs coming up. Um, die trying or live crying. Mm -hmm.